everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be milk painting this antique dresser as well as trying out some new paint brushes. So if you wanna see how I got this look and hear my thoughts on the milk paint and the brushes that I used, just keep watching. Some exciting news about today's video. I'm gonna have a giveaway. I'm gonna be using these zebra paint brushes in my video today, and Zebra has provided two sets of five brushes for you guys to win. And a bonus, Shecto Interiors is gonna give away a pint of paint with each set. Super easy to enter. All you gotta do is watch this video all the way to the end. Like it, leave a comment on what you wanna paint with these brushes, and go follow me on Instagram, and go follow Zebra Brushes on Instagram as well. I will put all that info down in the description box, and when the contest is gonna end, and all the rules and all that, so go check it out. Two winners, super excited, thanks Zebra. Okay, so I'm doing something new today. I am milk painting today, I'm definitely not an expert in it. This is only my second time using milk paint. I have this beautiful dresser that I am refinishing for a friend. I used to do a lot of client work back in the day, but with this whole YouTube thing, I just don't have a lot of time to do client work. But she showed me this piece and I was like, I would absolutely love to refinish that piece if I can film it for my channel. And she said, yes. I'm gonna be using Shacto Interiors milk paint and these zebra brushes to make over this dresser today. So let me grab all my stuff, zoom you in, and we'll get started. So this is a very old piece. Um, it came from a flea market. It is solid wood. This type of piece is really perfect for milk paint and you'll see why in a minute. I did decide that I wanted to keep the top natural. So I just stripped off whatever top coat was on this piece. I used my orbital sander and a 60 grit sandpaper just to clean all that up and get all that existing top coat off. And I also knew I wanted to do some fun glass antique knobs, so I'm just removing the existing hardware that is on here before I start painting. And I'm giving it a quick vacuum too, just to get all the cobwebs out. Now I'm grabbing my denatured alcohol and I just have a rag and I'm gonna wipe down the entire piece to clean it. You can also use TSP to do this, but it's really important when you are finishing over an existing finish like this that you clean it really well and get all the dirt and grime off before you go in with your paint. It's just gonna make it adhere better. And once you wipe down the entire piece, just let that dry for a little bit and then go back in with a damp cloth and just remove any remaining residue. Since this piece was really old, I had a lot of repairs to do. So I just glued a couple of spots that were sticking up um, where the veneer was coming loose and clamped that down. And then I also added some wood filler to some spots where there were cracks and divots. Once the wood filler dried, I went back in and just sanded everything down smoothly. And then I was ready to paint. So like I mentioned earlier, I will be using Shacto Interiors Milk Paint in Black Beach to paint this dresser today. What is really cool about milk paint is that it's an organic and non-toxic, environmentally safe paint. This is the way people used to paint stuff back in the day. It's in a powder form. So what you do is you just mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I grabbed a container that you can seal and measured out three fourths cup of water. And I'm gonna pour about half of that into my container. And then I'm going to take my three fourths cup measuring cup over here and I'm going to measure out three fourths cup of the powder paint. And then I'm gonna take that and dump that into the jar. And I made a big old mess. So I really wouldn't recommend doing this in your kitchen, but I was doing it for filming purposes. So once you have that powder in there with about half of your water, you just take your can, seal it really tight, and then just shake it up, kind of distribute that water and paint in there. And then you open it back up and you take the remaining amount of water that you need to mix up your paint and just pour that in there, shake it up again, and then you're gonna let that sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and come back and check it. So after 15 minutes, come back and check the consistency of your paint. If it's lumpy or chunky at all, just add a little bit of water to thin that out. I'm going to be adding extra bond today because I don't want my paint to chip. You add this in a two to one ratio. So I'm just filling up half of my cup that I used to measure my paint. And I'm just going to stir that in there. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be using zebra brushes to apply my paint today. This is what Shacto Interior sells. And I have just heard really great things about these brushes all in the furniture painting community. So I'm super excited to be trying them out today. 
And they work really, really well with milk paint. The things I will tell you about milk paint, if this is your first time using it, it is a lot thinner than like a typical furniture paint or a chalk paint, if you've worked with that, or any of those matte type furniture paints that you can just paint on an existing finish. Milk paint is a lot thinner. Um, but I will tell you with the bonding agent, it goes on really well. Like I was getting super great coverage on this first coat. The thing with milk paint is if you don't use a bonding agent, it can do really cool chippy things, but it's really unpredictable. So just know um, if you're going into milk painting for the first time, it can be quite scary and intimidating, but it can do really, really cool things. But just for this particular piece, and because I'm painting it for someone else, she didn't want like that really shabby, um, chippy look. So that is why I'm using the bonding agent, but you can do either one. There's lots of super, super cool things that you can do with milk paint. So I definitely recommend checking out Kristen's site because she has just beautiful examples of all the different things that you can do with milk paint. Here I have grabbed another zebra brush. This is called the triangle brush and it's nice and has a pointy tip on it and I was able to get into the really detailed portions of this baluster and get behind it as well to really push that paint in there. So after my first coat, I put my brushes in these brush baggies, which are a new great item that I found. So I'll link those below so you guys can check them out. I do not like cleaning my brushes in between coats. So this really saves you some time. So here I am just putting on the second coat. Um, I just closed my paint up in between coats and you just wait like a couple of hours in between. It's really best to use this paint all in one day when you you mix it so if at all possible do all your coats in one day I only ended up doing two coats on this piece but you can do as many as you want sometimes you might need three um, but if you do have to keep your paint overnight they do recommend keeping it in the refrigerator again tightly sealed and that will help it kind of last through the next day Okay, I am going to do some light distressing now that I have all my paint on with this 320. Um, again, my piece is completely dry. This is the next day. So I am just taking that 320 sandpaper block and just lightly rubbing it over different areas that I want to see some distressing in. I just do the edges and I did around the dresser drawers a little bit and around these keyholes. Um, I just like to distress milk paint and furniture paint because it's just going to make it look more natural. I know this kind of freak people out but I like to just do little light touches it just makes it look more natural it makes it look old and it's definitely gonna go with this piece once I'm done distressing I just grab a clean soft brush like this and brush back any dust that I kicked up sanding you can also use a tack cloth or um, like a damp paper towel I am going to be using Shecto Interiors Hemp Oil to seal my milk paint now. So I'm just pouring this into a little container and I have a lint-free cloth that I'm going to apply this with. I am wearing a glove, but you don't need to. This is all natural, so it's totally safe to handle. I just didn't want a greasy hand, so that's why I'm wearing a glove. Um, but you just rub this on and I rubbed it on with the way that my paint strokes were going just to make sure that I'm getting it nice and rubbed in and thick. And this is, you know, just like I say with wax. Um, you really want to just keep rubbing and rubbing this in. You want to think about the hemp oil absorbing into the paint and really becoming one with the paint. There are a number of ways to seal milk paint. You don't have to use hemp oil. You could use a natural wax uh, like that's made of beeswax or you could use a wax that is made up of solvents and you can also use um, water-based top coats like you've seen me use on here before but I wanted to do the hemp oil just because it is a natural finish and since this paint is natural I wanted this to be as clean as possible. So you're just going to let this set on here for anywhere from five to 30 minutes. And then you're going to come back with a completely dry, clean cloth and wipe it down. And then after you wipe it down, it still will look really wet. It will continue curing and drying as you let it set. Um, and you can go ahead and apply multiple coats. Just wait for about two hours in between coats. I also decided to seal the top of the piece with hemp oil. Hemp oil is great for raw wood wood like this. It just brings out a natural color and seals it at the same time. Um, so you can apply this with a brush or a rag. A brush probably would have been a better idea, but um, I didn't know that. So I used a rag. Um, it still turned out fine. Uh, once you get this all on, you are going to take a dry cloth again and wipe it down and just get that excess oil off. So after I let mine set overnight, I had some weird spots that weren't absorbing the hemp oil. So I decided to grab this natural wax I have. It's Dixie Belle Big Mom 
Mama's Betta. And this is actually a scented one. They have a couple scented ones and then they have um, an unscented one. So you could you work with whatever you want to. And I know Shacto Interior sells a natural wax like this too, if you want to check that out. So I just wanted to add again, more protection and these, the hemp oil and this natural wax are interchangeable. So I just am buffing this on with a clean cloth. And then once you get it on, you can go immediately back over it and take the excess off with a dry cloth and that kind of seemed to fill in the holes that I had. So typically I don't think that you'll have to do this. A couple of ways you can avoid this. One, I'm using black which is one of the trickiest colors to work with. Nine times out of ten I don't think you're going to see stuff like this on a lighter color um, and I probably should have sanded my piece down just a little bit before I painted just for extra insurance just to give it some teeth to stick to. Again, I don't think Think you're always going to run into a, this issue, but it's just good to know that sometimes you run into things and you got to work with it. To finish this off, I did get some old looking glass knobs from Hobby Lobby. This price says $7.99, but I did get them for 50% off and they were really easy to install. I didn't have to drill new holes or anything. I'm finally finished. Just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here is what our piece looks like now completed with Shacto Interiors Milk Paint. I really enjoyed working with this paint. I can't wait to try it on another project. I think next time I'll leave the bonding agent out and see what happens with a little chippy look. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you had fun learning about milk paint. I know I did. Don't forget to do all that stuff to enter to win those zebra brushes. Thanks to Shacto Interiors for providing the milk paint for today's project. Check out Kristen's site, check out her Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys next time.